Hey everyone, welcome back to the podcast. This is Two Catholic Dudes, and my name is Ryan Klaus. My name is Danny Cleary. And as always, we're not priests, we're not theologians, we're just two Catholic dudes, and we're talking about our faith. And and we're <laughs> and we're here. We are here. It is 2023. 2023. Our last episode was November 2020. It's been a minute. It was almost like we were living on a different planet. Kinda. In some regards. But you know, it's like riding a bike. We're 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 not we're we're, we're not putting ourselves out there that we're going to go every week because I think that was uh, a lot of the reason why we ended up stopping, but. Danny was here. We were just hanging out, and we said, "You know what? Let's let's do an episode." Well, we thought, "Well, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna talk about?" And we always have great uh, conversations together about not just uh, faith, but about life. And that was the original reason we started the podcast was because we wanted to bring our friendship of conversations and faith and share it with other people. So while we were sitting here catching up today, we were like, "You know what? Let's for old times' sake hit record." And let's do an episode. Dude, I was getting so hyped. Like, okay, we got this whole setup. It's the same room that you guys might remember from most of our episodes. Mm -hmm. um, but for the last two years, I've been off camera. I've been busy uh, shooting other, other people's things. And so there's a new group that's coming in to do a podcast. They actually made this table. It's pretty sweet. I know. Uh, it was just like a rectangle table, but they cut it so that they could sit at a more... Uh, camera friendly angle. Anyways, this is all set up. The cameras are ready. The lights are ready. Danny was here. We were hanging. I was like, dude, it's all set up for the most part. Like, I, it, I miss this. Well, it was one of those things where, you know, I believe that God puts you where he wants you. And, you know, it was almost like, you know, you had everything all set, like you're saying. And we had a lot of, we had some free time today. And I was coming down to, to see you anyway and, and catch up. And God's like, oh, uh, hey. I, I walked in when I first got here and all the mics were set up and stuff. You're like, oh, yeah, I have a podcast shoot later with this other group. And I went, okay. And then when you threw out the idea, you know, it was impossible to say no. Why not, right? So we Talk about catch up where we – honestly, we haven't seen each other too much in the last couple of years because you've been busy up north. I've been yeah. busy down here. You know, life gets busy. Uh, through COVID was craziness. You heard a lot of episodes about that, but we're we're done with COVID now. <laughs> we were like the COVID podcast. <laughs> we for a lot of it, man. Like, what else are you going to talk about? We're all isolated, and and half the, the 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 last little bit of our season were remote, and that was tough. Yeah. Uh, but COVID's over. Even even if you, way over. <laughs> even though we still saw somebody wearing a mask outside on the street on their bike. <laughs> <laughs> Careful out there. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, so. <laughs> We got a lot to talk about. A lot's happened in our lives. Lots happened in the church, our our specific churches. Yeah, I'm sure. A lots happened in our faith life. As you know, everyone listening, everyone goes on their journeys. Mm -hmm. There's beauty in the journey. I actually just posted, or I put up a picture on the wall out here. I went to Jerusalem, to Israel, to the Holy Land. Yeah. In March, with a my, I was blessed. My parish brought me on to be kind of the cantor for the for the Holy Land pilgrimage, and I got to play at a lot of these sites. Every day we played, we did a mass, and I and I sung, and brought, I had my guitar carrying it around all that. Anyways, I was also the photographer. I had my camera with me because it's kind of the thing I do now. So I took photos everywhere, and I took a lot of these really cool pictures that I thought, and I printed them up. There's a couple behind Danny over here. Yeah, honestly, I'm, I'm going to cut you and interrupt you, but these pictures are crazy. They look incredible. I walked in, and I didn't know they were your pictures when I came to visit the last time. I walked in, and I went... Heck yeah, finally, some nice new artwork in here, a little Catholic artwork. And Ryan's like, yeah, I just had them blow them up. And I, even when you're explaining to me where that you got them done, I'm like, oh, did you like find them online or whatever? And when you told me they were your photos, I was really blown away. You can't really see, but on our shot, there's a couple back here. But I really, they are tremendous photos. Thank tremendous. you. Appreciate it. I'm, I'm finishing my website right now and my the redo of my website, uh, just like the, this is like the redux of our of our hey, of, of two many things dudes, exactly but uh, i might actually put some of these on there and and offer them up to purchase I, so i think you should because it, you know it like art is a beautiful thing to like that people want in their homes or or whatever and and to y your photos are like of the architecture but it also has that element of faith in it that's why i liked them so much because it was like a cool picture but also you could be like this is of a holy place, so uh, Thanks, super cool. I, I encourage you to put them up there because I think people would hey, be appreciate interested in having that. them. 
So the, the reason I started talking about that was because there's a there's another piece that's not on this shot here, but downstairs uh, in the hallway, and it's of St. John the Baptist Church. It's 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 in Jerusalem. I'm pretty sure it's not in the old city though, but it's in Jerusalem. And I'm trying to remember all the places we went to, right? But it, they they say that uh, John the Baptist was born there, and so there's a little site uh, down in in uh, that. There's you walk downstairs and there's right. like this little area where they say he was born right there. Now our tour guide let us know that there's like four different churches that all claim that Saint John the Baptist was born there. <laughs> right. <laughs> like how do you really know? Uh, we can talk about how you know that the the painting right be, or the picture right behind you was the actual Church of the Nativity and mm -hmm. Jesus was mm -hmm. born there. Yeah. We can talk about that. But anyways, the picture out there they were doing work on that church and there was scaffolding all around and there was lights. And I walked in and I was like, oh my gosh, just as a photographer, I was like, this is aesthetically is actually super beautiful. There was yeah. like a blue light coming from some of the work lights and stuff like that. And just, it looked very interesting. And th there was the beauty, there was the cross there, but th with the scaffolding and stuff. So I took a bunch of pictures, I edited them, I kind of brought out the colors and stuff like that, but I just thought it was v just a strikingly beautiful image. And so I hung it up and the, the metaphor that I was able to draw from it after the fact was that look, we're all a work in progress. Yeah. We, we all have our scaffolding up all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, the, but to be able to acknowledge that beauty and stop and appreciate it and not say, oh, no, no, don't look over here. Don't look over here. Don't look over here. I'm working on that part. I'm working on this part. But to say, no, look, like, check me out with the scaffolding, with all this. There's so much beauty there. There's always beauty in the build. There's beauty in the rebuild. There's beauty in the improvement. And that's what that what the photo that you're speaking about it really encompasses as well because it and that's I think an aspect for all of our life all of our and it, it can be an aspect of our faith life our faith life is a constant it's a journey it's not something that you just have it's a journey that we're constantly building there's moments where it's maybe damaged and it needs rebuilding there's moments where you're building an entire new part of that faith life uh, and, and there's beauty in all aspects of that. I think it's a really great metaphor it was a beautiful photo. Um, I, it's my favorite one that you took for Thank sure. Thank you. Thank you. It was, it was a fun process, not only taking the photos, but then I wasn't sure exactly what I was going to do with them. I was just there and I'm like, I'm going to snap as many pictures as I could. When I got back though, and I started curating them, which was a long process. It took me like three weeks cause I took so many pictures. Right. It was like, I, I kind of took out all the, all the crap pictures and then uh, funneled that down to like, okay, here's like the best ones of those, but then, okay, then the best of the best, then the best of the best. And I finally ended up starting posting a journey on Facebook and Instagram of like day one, here's where we went and here's some of the, my favorite pictures. But then I was kind of right, I ended up starting writing like this long description and I would come up with these metaphors and uh, theology and symbolism be behind some of the meanings of them. Heck yeah. It, it was able to really like, discern on what the trip meant to me in a deeper way through these photos that I had taken that that's what it's all about that that's that's how you turn something that is already great into your own personal experience yeah. so awesome and then what ended up happening was I, I I don't know if anyone who's listening now has noticed but I haven't posted like anything in two years right and I miss it honestly like I did get burnt out and we can talk about that sure I got like really burnt out in terms of posting some of the psalms of the week two Catholic dudes all the stuff that was going on absolutely it was a lot and I needed that break but when I was posting these pictures all these people started commenting and they were following along this journey with me and they they were like I'm so glad you're posting these I feel like I'm there with you I'm never going to be able to go to the holy land but this this was like they they were so grateful and I and I really kind of missed that the gift of being able to put myself out there sure. online yeah. and share my faith and help people in their faith and i was like then then you were here today and i'm like oh it's just like the pieces are falling together yeah you know, you know not necessarily again like we said do we need to do this every week we, we could well let's let's before we jump into that let's let's talk about it because we have been asked one million times over the last of the last two years what, what happened? happened to the podcast <laughs> <laughs> what happened to the podcast and it comes at a time where like it was a we were when we first when you first moved we were so new to this ministry this project that we wanted that we were still kind of all fired up and on all, all cylinders so like the drives were easier and it was 
like there was just so much that we were like, we have to do it no matter what. And we were willing to do all these different things. And I had a different place to live. So when you came down, I had a bigger space and it just, there was a lot of things that, that worked out, but as the, you know, the COVID thing and then the busyness came in and, and you started taking a lot more projects on and stuff as well. It just became like something we loved to do, something we uh, really enjoyed became like a chore. It became uh, like not not the not the joyful ministry that it was, but like, uh, like there was a couple of those days and, and, and we talked about, it, I think on the, at the time of where we were hitting like four episodes in a day. It's a lot. And it's just like, you could hear in our voices on some of those episodes where we're just like faking it till you make it kind of a thing just because we're like, well, we have to get one out by Monday. And I think that like that, it took a toll on our friendship. It took a toll on our faith lives. It took a toll on everything. We were just like, we, uh, and you were the one that was able to be like, Hey, I need a break for me. And you know, and, and I was like at first like frustrated, but like I, I that now looking back on it, like I needed the break too, from a lot of different, from the social media, constantly being on it, posting about it. Like, okay, we got to go live this day and we got to do this, this day. It was just, man, it, it, it was just overwhelming. It becomes a full-time job, and yeah. we weren't making any money doing this. No. This was just our ministry. Yeah. Um, and there's, there's, there was so much fruit in that. Right. But it was, it turned into more and more of a full-time job. And the, yeah. the more we, I, I scaled up the video production side of things, and I'm a perpetual perfectionist, and right. I, and I can't not, <laughs> like, phone it in ever, and I keep scaling up and adding yeah. more cameras and yeah. stuff, and. Uh, and I'm terrified even in this moment because I've scaled up a video production company in the last couple of years and I'm doing like some higher end projects. Yeah. But I'm again, I said I haven't been on camera. I've been the person behind the camera. And when people are doing their own podcasts, I can be behind checking all the audio levels, checking the video and assure that it's right. And I forgot the difficulty of being, hosting, on, being on the camera and like looking over and being like, are the cameras still running? Is the audio clipping? <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. That's kind of the uh, the joy of it, I guess, is is the the excitement of it. It's just like let's just hit record and that's that's the way we started it was like we don't know what we're doing exactly we're just gonna hit record and just start talking and and that was yeah what what why we started this podcast because we wanted to show that like again the original purpose of this was there's there are those high level things that you see content wise by catholic um uh, folks creators the ascension presents bishop, bishop Barron, Barron. his high level of stuff and we wanted to be the anybody can do this. If you have a willing heart and a drive to share your faith, you can do it. And that's what that's what we started as. That's what at our core, that's what we still are. Yes. Ryan, you guys can't see the whole room, but let me tell you, it is insanely awesome in here. There is so much stuff, really high level of production. I've seen the projects that you do. And thank you, brother. And you and, and, and the fact that like the joy of it is that you're you're doing it for all kinds of different things, but here at this moment of us sharing and, and doing this podcast is it goes back to the root of I do want to glorify God with all of this great stuff that I've got and all this great stuff I've learned how to do, yeah. which is the core of what we started the podcast in the first place. Yeah. You know? Amen. Yeah. Like my production studio, which kind of formed from doing these projects during COVID, sh shooting just stuff at the church mm -hmm. and the podcast started getting looking better and better. Uh, and then Catholic Charities and Knights of Columbus asked me to do projects. And I'm like, I was making, you know, moderate amount of money now. Sure. Right? It wasn't just freebie projects. And I said, you know what? I feel like I might as well just make this official, make it an LLC, make it a production company. But I spent about four months coming up with a name. And they're like, just do it. Just to call it Ryan Klaus Productions, Ryan Klaus Studios, whatever. And I'm like, I don't want my name in there. I want, I want this to be a Catholic production company. Sure. But, but... I don't want it to be like Holy Spirit Studios or sure because God's Love Production. <laughs> because at that same vein of yes, you want to be a Catholic-driven uh, production company, you do need to open your you. You want to make sure that you're still open enough to take on all the monetary possibilities that you can. Correct. That's how it goes. That's probably the first 
first priority there is like you don't sure. want to close yourself off to secular clients, right? Because often that's where the bigger money is coming in. 100%. People, people are willing to pay the fair rate. And if it's a Catholic client, I might go, look, I'll give you X amount of deal because this is in my heart to be able to right. give back, right? right? The second thing, though, is kind of a covert Catholic production company where um, – it's, not, it's the content doesn't necessarily have to beat you over the head with being Catholic, but it can kind of be like you've seen those. Well, we talked, we had like a whole part of an episode, Lord of the Rings. Like, yeah, it's not a Catholic movie, but there's a lot of Catholic theology there, right? Because Catholic, Catholic, o- Catholic author, Catholic author, right? So he inserts those Catholic ideologies in the content that he's making, right? Case in point, a book there. But I, if I can make a video that has nothing to do with Catholicism on the surface, right? But can have those major themes of Catholicism, I think that's a great way to great way to evangelize yeah so the name of the company is path 16 studios which on the surface is just like cool trendy name i guess but sure. uh since i went through the whole project of writing the psalms if you were following my psalms of the week which i got most of them on youtube um the psalms really encompassed most of my life and and my Catholic music life. So I was looking for kind of snappy names that went with the Psalms. And so that, that stands for Psalm 16, Lord, you will show me the path of life. Amazing. How cool. I, I, this is my first time hearing that information. That What a great thing. I thought it was like 16 <laughs> gigs on my hard drive. Uh, I don't know. Uh, but what a cool thing. Like, what a cool way to, um, again, to glorify God in that. Because what it also might do is someone that's like, Oh, by the way, I'm I'm hiring Path 16 Studios to do my whatever. What is it? Where'd you come up with that name? That immediately opens a dialogue and a conversation for you to share your faith. Sure. This is where I came up with it because blah 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 blah. Right. You know, and and, and that's something that I think people, you know, it goes back to our a lot of our original conversations and what I tell young people all the time. I'm still a youth minister, everyone. Still work for the with the kids. We'll talk about that in a second. Yeah. But is you can talk about faith it doesn't always have to be the like okay well uh mass and uh like all of the what you'd think at service level is the church stuff you can talk about faith in all different little ways and and continue to sprinkle jesus into that conversation because that's what might hook people until they go you know i'm a little more interested in what's going on Uh, i'll share a quick story on that is uh, i have a really good friend of mine um we've talked about it before i am a i'm still doing i'm still wrestling still doing the pro wrestling thing. And I got a friend of mine and he's a wrestler and he was just going through a really tough time recently. Um, just like a lot of drama in his life and struggles he was having. And he goes, you know, Danny, I'm, I'm like religious, but I don't really know anything about it. But he goes, I feel like God is calling me to this certain way, but I just don't know how to, to navigate it. Like, like, and he just called me on the phone. Like, he's like, Hey, can I talk to you? So I started talking to him and, and he's describing like this story or this, the, and the struggle he's going with. I think I go, man, I, through my, th- my faith, I went, I know exactly what you're feeling. And I started describing to him, Hey, uh, there's a story in the scriptures where the followers of Jesus are on a boat and a storm comes and the storm is raging and the water is raging and Jesus walks out on the water and, and calls one of the followers, calls Peter. We know that we know this story. He calls Peter, Peter, come on out to the water and walk. And Peter gets out. And when he's looking at Jesus, he's doing the impossible and he's walking on water. But as soon as he notices the waves around him, he begins to sink when he starts to panic. And I said that to my friend, I said, Hey, you know, sometimes in life there's going to be, you know, drama and there's going to be scary things. And there's gonna be all this stuff that you're dealing with. But if you keep your focus on where you feel that God is calling you to be, that's that you're going to be able to do the impossible. And maybe the impossible is just getting through this difficult time right now. That might be your impossible. Mm-hmm. Uh, this thing that doesn't make any sense. I could never, I can't get through this. You know, Peter probably thought when he woke up that morning, I can't walk on water. But if you, you keep that focus on where God is calling you, that that's what you can do. It's when we focus. And I told him, when you focus on the drama and the struggle and all the scary things in life, that's when you begin to sink. Keep that, you know, and so I, it was a really cool thing to be able to share my faith with him and share the scriptures with him without, and he is, he's not Catholic. He's not, he's just like, I know that there, I know God's real, but I don't know anything about it. And I was able to kind of share my faith with him in that moment over the phone. That's beautiful. And that, that goes back to not living in a, in a bubble. A lot of right. people, they, they're amazing Catholics and they, they have great Catholic um, prayer groups and Bible studies and stuff and do that. That's awesome. But the people that aren't afraid to go out in the world and mix and mingle yeah. and, 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 
be able to evangelize in situations like that. Mm -hmm. I, I was, who was I talking to the other day? They said they, they started a, a Catholic group and they wanted to evangelize and stuff. And they started with that bubble group and they decided to go out to frat parties. They were like a college group, I think mm -hmm. at the time. And they decided to go to like frat and sorority parties and stuff like that. Like, you know, in the frat house where everyone's just doing the things. And they were like, you know, we would go and we'd have a couple drinks with them, but we didn't go with the agenda of, have you met Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior? Sure. And knocking on the door and everything. And they just went in and started like partying with them, like responsibly. Sure. But then in covert those, partiers. Yeah. In those casual conversations, what they were having with people, people were able to start to see the beauty and fruits of our Catholic faith. Absolutely. Because I, you, I think that like, that's the, the myth of, um, uh, people think, oh, well, if you, if, if you follow Christ, like you're this way, you are the stereotypical, uh, churchy person, yeah. you know, and, and it's just, there's just so much deeper life than that. And, and your faith is deeper than that. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, so it, it, it's, it's a lot of stuff. I wanted to talk quickly before uh, we get to our break here is, uh, I'm still doing the youth group thing, but I now work at two churches as opposed to one church. I was doing youth group at one church. Uh, now I'm doing it at two churches. Dude, you, you could do all the churches in the area. You're that good. <laughs> this guy's like the most sought after youth minister in the region. Um, I appreciate that. Um, I just, uh, yeah, I'm very lucky because actually the church that I, na my second church that I work at, uh, our pastor that originally hired both of us is the pastor there. And he called me in and was like, Hey, get over here and come work for me too. And so I'm able to, to do, um, youth ministry at both areas now. And, uh, it's really an awesome thing. I'm really, I'm really blessed to be able to do that. But man, is it a lot, two retreats, two confirmations. It's, it's a lot more work. Sure. But it's, it's a, a really joyful thing that I'm getting to do. And then you, you're, you're kind of starting that program from the ground, ground back up again, right? Like yeah. It, it yeah. Was, so, I mean, a lot of programs had to start from, from the ground up with COVID. They, yeah. they all shut down and yeah. then, you know, you missed two years of teens or young or young adults or teens or middle school kids and like they're quickly out of the program and you're starting fresh with kids who didn't have any experience so that I, I can't imagine i see the difficulties in my own parish and the youth ministry programs that they have but like um why don't you talk about some of the struggles that you've had coming out of covid building those programs back up you know it, it the hardest part is the culture that the kids live in today it's alarming uh and it's I call it a godless world that we live in where it's more popular and cooler in the eyes of a young person to have no faith, to have no God, to have no, um, sense of, of morality. Like you don't like that stuff is bad almost is what it, it gets pushed onto them. And well, it, let me, let me, uh, add one point. I'm yeah. sure. I think you were watching it. The last of us on HBO, mm -hmm, the, the mm -hmm. video game show. I liked the show. I watched a couple episodes. And it was like the second to last episode. It was about the, each one of these. Oh, oh, yes. I know exactly what you're going to talk about. Okay. So, but this is this is a common theme in Hollywood. The, the opening scene is like a preacher and he's telling about the Bible to his little commune group. These are all like survivors of a zombie apocalypse. And so they, they formed like this little commune group yeah. and he's like their leader and he is teaching them about the Bible. He's, he's shown at the beginning to be this godly figure, right? right? And then sure enough, he's the bad guy. He's doing terrible things to children. It's just like, but like they always, yeah, it, it's a lot of typical Christianity is the villain of the story and that, but, and it's not just like that in the fictional shows and movies, like you're describing the kids are dealing with that. Yep. The kids are dealing with it where, and I see it a lot of the times where some, it used to be when I was growing up church was like, we, that's where everybody wanted to go. But then like, it was like the hidden partiers like on the weekends, like, oh, but like when, when no one's, no one's looking, I want to be partying and, and, and doing and smoking and, you know, being all over the place. Right. And now sometimes with a lot of our kids, I notice it's, they want to be seen in public as this cool, uh, person that's into all the secular things that the world is, but like secretly they're like, ah, but I got to go to youth group where Jesus is because that's that's really where I'm fulfilled. You know what I mean? Right, like, right, right. so it's almost like now we're going back to the days of, of the, of the fish where it's, you have to hide the fact that you love the Lord and Secret you have to, masses. yeah, you have to hide the fact that, that your life 
is dictated by something bigger than your own selfish needs. Sure. Um, I have a ton more actually. To, to, if we want to talk about that even more about the youth group stuff, but why don't we why don't we take our break and, and then we'll jump back in? Sounds good. All right, we're back. You know what, guys? We could. <laughs> there's part of the charm of the show is. I'm so glad we're addressing this. <laughs> Part of the charm of the show is that we started with in sm such small beginnings, and I had one little Sony a7 III camera, and that camera only lasted 30 minutes before the recording stopped, which we had to learn the hard way, I think. We like lost, yes. we lost most of an episode. Yes, but that's episode part of, two. We had to redo the whole thing. Whole thing. That's part of the learning process, though, right? So now I now have three cameras, two of which are cinema cameras that are like Netflix approved, but like I'm not a millionaire. I don't have three of those, uh, and so we're still using one of those cameras that's still that camera, which still sure. had our 30-minute time limit, and you know, I was, we we're like, I know all the fancy editing tricks. I could just edit past that. But I was like, you know what? Let's stick to our guns and do yeah. like we used to. So like, you, if you've been listening for a long time, if you're if you're a like a, a person that's like, you know, you're back for this this episode, our our Redux episode here, and you're like, oh my gosh, and all those times we go, okay, we'll be right back, and then we're back in less than a second. <laughs> um, for us, it's a break for us here in the studio where we take a minute to take a deep breath, get a sip of water, whatever. But for you guys, it's not a break and. We sure. could have addressed that and just been like paused and then kept going, but we figured, you know, it's part of our, like you said, part of the charm of the show. Exactly. It's like, you know, I have to tell, you know what, since we're being honest. We're being real honest. Every episode for 68 episodes. 67. The, this 67. Is, this, 67. Is, this, is this is 68, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. I did it in this episode. Before the show would happen, while the music is, the intro's coming in, people that are watching the video version, I'm, looks like I'm adjusting and fixing the microphone. I'm not doing anything. <laughs> I'm just moving it for no reason. But I did it the first couple of episodes because we we're like, what do we do? Like, we have to look like we're preparing. It's like those traditions, like football players or baseball players, they got to they gotta adjust their hat and they got to, like, before they get yeah. to bat or they, whatever. They got to, you know, wiggle their arms or yeah, whatever in a certain yeah. way. So, yeah. You got to loosen up a bit, We're just right? exposing everything today. On, on our, <laughs> Two on, Catholic on, dudes exposed. exposed. <laughs> um, anyway, so back Wait to for the documentary to come out about... <laughs> <laughs> the real story, two Catholic dudes. That's what you're hearing right now. You the guys are getting the secrets all the, of the dudes. All the BTS. <laughs> um, so back to what we were talking about. We're talking about youth, uh, kind of. This episode is our, our all over the place. But we're talking about <laughs> we're talking about youth, and and how you know the struggles of, of being a youth minister, and, and and even honestly, kind of being a parent nowadays, oh a, a Catholic parent is is I, I say all the time we live in a godless world. Where or God is made to be the enemy. God is in in television shows. Religious people are the bad guys. Uh, you have people on that TV show, The View, uh, which is I can't stand that show. But like I see it online of those hosts basically saying that white Christian people are the same as the Taliban. Like like that's crazy to say. Dude. That's like a crazy thing to say. Like there is bad people in every group on every. Um, you know, race, culture, religion of any kind in, in this world. There are bad people everywhere. But to, to make a, a, a blanket claim like that on national television and then people are like, think that, that, that being a Christian is there's no, you know, bad things that are said about you. Like that's, that's just crazy to me. We're literally under attack. That's crazy. Every day. Yeah. All day, every day. And, and people that are like, oh, they're forcing Christianity down your throat. Do you know who's doing that? Because really the opposite. Like every kid that I know the world wants them to not be Catholic, not be Christian, not right, follow Christ. Right. They want them to do whatever it is the the world wants you to do, whatever dude, they deem is proper. Dude, I remember when I was in grade school, you're you're under like I'm talking second or third grade, yeah. and like you're starting to realize that there's more people outside of your circle than your parents. Sure, and you're meeting these kids at school, and the stuff. world's bigger than your hometown. Yeah, yeah, and you're realizing that like religion's a thing, and you're like I'm. You, uh, your parents say, what are, what are you? I'm Christian. So if people ask you, what religion are you? You go, I'm Christian. And you're like, what does that mean? The little kid talk about it. Everybody always would answer Christian, Catholic, Christian, Catholic. And like you meet somebody who's like, I don't know, I'm atheist or nothing. Like no kid would, rarely a kid would say that back then. I'm, I'm aging myself, but I'm turning 40 next month. Um, but so that was, that was back in the 80s when I was right. a little kid. And it was just, that was the norm. Everybody was Christian or Catholic or sure. some, something. Something. Jewish. Some kind, some kind of, yeah, Jewish. There some was kind some of kind of a religion that was there. Yeah. And uh, the kids that were, that were like not the norm was to not, not have an answer for you. And yeah. it's literally flipped. And it's just 
and they have and everybody has names for it. I'm agnostic. I'm atheist. I'm I uh, I want to have nothing to do with religion, whatever. Yeah, right. And you're the weirdo now if you say I'm Catholic, I'm Christian, whatever. Which is like I you know I'm sad for those that that feel that way. Yeah. I I, I hate I don't want to use the term like, oh, they're they're bad or whatever because they're not that they, they, you know uh, you know there's like i said there's bad people in every facet of life for me when i think about it like that like people that are that are like oh i'm i don't have any belief or i'm atheist or whatever i look at it as from a from a catholic perspective i am saddened that they are not uh allowing themselves or or welcoming in the love and grace and fulfillment that that jesus brings to your life and I look at it in that way. Um, I think a lot of times it's, you know, uh, people think that the, our first thought is, oh, you don't believe in God? You're going to hell. It's like that's, at least for me, that's not my first thought. My first thought is on in this beautiful life that, that, we, that, that God has, I believe that God has given us. You're missing such a beautiful portion of it by not allowing the love of the Lord um, to, when you look at beauty, to, to, to know the author of that beauty, uh, it, it, you're, it feels like you're just missing such a beautiful part of this great life. You're missing it, and you're living in that storm that you were talking about yeah, earlier, yeah. the chaos of the storm. Everyone thinks they want the storm, the the allure of the world, the all the, uh, you know, all, all the world offers you that isn't keeping your eyes on Jesus, but you end up having those conversations that you were having with your buddy who just was completely lost because of those things. You're, you're, you're drawn to all those, all those sexy things in this world, yeah. but, but it ends up, you end up sinking in that, in the water when you're really trying to, uh, to walk towards Jesus. But all you need to do is look at him. Well, well it's funny that, uh, so people have asked me, Right. Because a lot of the, like, in my world of like, like, I have like two groups of people I hang out with. I have like my Catholic friends and then I have my like, not any religion at all friends. Yeah. The, the, the wrestling circle of people. Um, and, uh, I, but when people ask me, they're like, you know, what is, you know, because the, the, the mental health crisis in the world is astounding. And especially in young people, right? Everybody's depressed. Everybody's got some kind of, anxiety or affliction or something everybody everyone on earth struggles with it in some way but some people really really struggle yep. right um and people like ask me all the time and they go like what why is it that you believe in god aside from the fact that your mom told you to when you were 10 and i was always like man that's a great question um and something that i always come back to is because i have bad days just like everybody else where i'm upset or sad or overwhelmed or uh the stress the waves the wind the storm is too much and i and i take my eyes off the lord um i remember the second half of that story where when i do sink or when peter did sink that jesus immediately pulls me out and the reason i think in the in in life why i have that is because if i had no god if i if i if god wasn't real there was no God. Then all of these thoughts that I have or all these struggles that I have or all of these pains that I have, they're the most powerful thing in the world, right? Um, and all of my joys, they're the most powerful things in the world, but they will eventually, like, there, there's good and bad. But in my life, there's good and there's bad and there's God. And God is more powerful and he's bigger than all of it. And I can rest in knowing that, you know, if something is really great in my life, thank God. Thank God for giving it to me. But if something is really bad in my life, no matter how bad it is, I've got God that's bigger. That song of uh, if, if, if God is before you, who can be against you? And, and that is my biggest reason of why do you believe so deeply in God? Because... I don't want any bad thing in my life to ever become the most powerful thing in my life because it po it can't possibly because I know God is bigger. Yep. You know? Dude, and that's so beautiful. I wish more people could have that, have 
you know, you have a God that wants to be on your side, that wants to fight for you, that wants to love you, that wants to protect you, that wants to that shower has, you. That has a plan for you. That even, so even though the, the, the struggles that you're going through, like God's got a plan there. And, and more, I believe that every struggle that I go through is to make me stronger. Uh, who Kelly Clarkson? <laughs> <laughs> what doesn't kill you makes you strong yes 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 <laughs> you're like what i got caught off guard there but yes what, <laughs> what doesn't kill you yeah yeah that's a great song um <laughs> you thought i was just quoting yeah i uh, thought you were just Steve i thought you were just saying kelly clarkson is a great singer but you were going <laughs> with the yeah um you're right but but <laughs> there, there's a plan to like uh, in those in those defeats in the moments when yeah. i'm down and out when the moments when i when you know, I'm not having my my best day. I can learn from those, and I choose to learn from them because yeah. I know that God has that plan. If you don't, if you don't have any of that viewpoint, if you if you don't believe that God exists, your those darknesses, those those bad days, all those terrible things, they're going to overwhelm you. And the, and you can see that, like you said, with all the depression, all the mental health issues that are going on in this world, everyone's getting overwhelmed because we live in this godless society, and right. they have no, they have nothing greater to turn to. And I think people think they're like, oh, well, believing in God doesn't take away anything that's bad or whatever. You're right. And sometimes, like, the fact that I have the Lord doesn't even make the bad thing easier to get through. It still sucks. Yeah. But I know what's on the other side. Yeah. I know what's next. I know that this cannot last because only one thing is forever, and that's the love of the Lord. And that's eternal life and what I'm striving for, right? So no matter how bad something is, I know if I maintain my faith in God and how he wants me to live, I will get to the other side. See, you know? and so uh, going back to my question at the beginning of the break was what a, a joy and a beautiful experience that these kids are able to hear this message from you uh, now at two parishes, right? And you, you started giving some talks as well you've yeah. done, you've done some retreats you did uh, uh tell, tell us about those events um i've been doing i i got to i got i was blessed with the opportunity to keynote speak uh, or not keynote speak uh mc uh santa barbara youth day uh which is our, our, our regional youth day up in up north uh for the santa barbara region in the la archdiocese so it was like 800 kids um and i just got the chance to welcome them to the day and invite them in and but even in that day it was so hard to like because i could see the kids of like like they're being forced to be here by the you know they're being dragged in on a leash because they're just yep you know but but to be able to be part of that day and at least be able to proclaim how much we love the lord and, and try to get them to see like your faith is bigger than your confirmation class you know yeah it was a really amazing thing i was very thankful for that you um, give those kids a little bit, just this little nugget of of joy, of hope, of inspiration, of something. It yeah. could be like that mustard seed. And I and I was truly one of those kids when I was forced to go to those events. I, as but, was I. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, "Are you kidding me? I have to go to this thing." Um, and I didn't even have a cell phone at the time that they told me I couldn't use. But now, <laughs> now they're now, like, now it's like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, it's rough. but but to be able to have a, someone like you to be able to to, I think what they look they look for is somebody who's excited about their own faith somebody who's yeah. excited and passionate and can fire them up uh, you know there's the if you come in there and just read scripture to them they're not going to get it no they, you don't you want to hear something crazy you want to know the recent the most recent talk i just gave it to you through okay i did a quick synopsis of the goofy movie <laughs> i love it at youth group comment in what your favorite episode? If you guys were like diehard listeners, that one's probably mine. That was probably my favorite episode as well. That was like episode sixty or something. Yeah, like. it, it was towards the end of the run, but uh, man, that was a fun episode. Fun episode, and I like. I remember I was sitting there uh, looking at my journal, like because you know, uh, you know, my girlfriend uh, Jess, she she helps me run the youth group, right? And so she's uh, she's running all the games for me, and and like she's incredible, like it, just such an example for all the young women to look up to, like to living living her faith, you know. Um, and, and she goes, Hey, like you need to give a talk on, uh, like, I think that the way that, the, that the way the games and the discussions is going, like we need something on wanting God in like God wanting to be in your life, even if we don't want him to be. And I'm like, okay, like I, I got it. Like, I'll, so I'm sitting there and I'm like, okay, what can I say? And I'm looking through my thing and that line in the goofy movie of, you know, I want to have my own life, but I know I want to be part of it. I went, the goofy movie yeah and i just get up there and, and i just gave, played our two guys that do episode yeah i just went <laughs> all right everyone enjoy no but so i started giving this talk and i had three or four kids the next week come back and they're like danny i watched the goofy movie on disney plus and you're right it was kind of godly yeah and i'm like yeah so, so go back uh, and check out that episode hilarious. if you haven't heard it but uh, it was 
It awesome. was on point. It, it was, was on point. Awesome. I mean, you led that. I I watched the movie like an hour before we did yeah. the, the podcast, and so I was like asking the questions yeah. about it, and you were drawing us Love through that, that conversation. Though. But that was that was super cool. If we do, if we start to do this more, if this is like a spark to to get this going again, I think we had talked about because we were so fired up about that the episode mo- the to do like a movie series. And I know Bishop Barron does it, but he does it on a very high intellectual level. Um, yeah, you don't need a thesaurus to do our movie yeah, yeah, synopsis. Yeah. Like, You'll be like, oh, I know some of these words. Like Bishop Barron, Jordan Peterson, like what? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I, I love listening to Jordan Peterson podcasts and stuff, but like. I get overwhelmed about 20 minutes in. I'm like, I, I got to stop. I have and to like, pause sometimes. I've yeah. had to look up words that they use. Yeah, Because yeah, yeah. I'm like, what? Because, but it's amazing. But it's like, I'm like, man, I don't know. But I love that because it stretches you, right? Yes. And, I, and everything yes. that I do, I try to stretch and grow and learn, even if it's uncomfortable. And sometimes the, the, the crazy vocabulary, vocabulary that he uses is very uncomfortable. But that means it's doing something, right? Right. Um, if everything's too comfortable and in this in this world, whatever you're doing, you're doing it wrong. Yeah. Be, un- be comfortable being uncomfortable. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so and then the only other things that I've really gotten myself into, aside from this, these talks and what I'm doing in my youth groups, is I got to do the two confirmation retreats, and this year was the first time I got to go off site again and do my confirmation retreat at Holy Cross, which is my favorite thing to do. I put so much work into this retreat, dude. Can I just tell you how much I miss Holy Cross retreats? I, I appreciate that. Uh, th- not no shade to any other parishes that I've been at, but yours are by far exponentially greater like the best retreats that i've ever been a part of and wow. i miss not being a part of it thank you man yeah i i'm i it's something i adore to do and it's because how much i love god I, and what god did for me on retreat you know when he opened my heart on retreat uh i want i said okay god i get you that your plan for my life is to open the hearts of as many young people as i can and you're gonna the retreat is what you my tool that you gave me to do it. Um, and that's why I look at every retreat. Cause you've seen me on retreat mode. I'm, I am lasered in. Like I don't mess around. I'm like everything, every minute matters. Even if they're at free time, if they're at free time, I'm not, I'm coming up with what I'm going to do next or, or fine tuning it or whatever. And, um, I made the joke cause I, I work at, uh, the two parishes now, St. Maximilian Colby and, and, and Holy Cross. And I was at another parish that I helped on a retreat with t- two years ago. And I did their retreat and I got there and, and a good friend of mine who's uh, runs the confirmation program with me at St. at one of at the other parish. Uh, he was there, too. And he's he he's amazing at logistics and getting all the equipment you need and everything else. As far as like the spiritual side of a retreat, not his thing. And I get there and I show up on the retreat and it's me and, and Jess, my girlfriend. And why did I say that weird? And uh, and my friend Tamian, who's my like right hand man. And we show up, and he goes, uh, okay, I got you all the supplies. Do your XLRs are do, do, clipped do, into your microphones. Do the retreat. And I went, do you have a schedule? Nope. Do you have a theme? Nope. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so we sit there, and we write the schedule. Friday night, boom, put on this retreat. So this year, at least, uh, I worked with him again, and he knew – like we met ahead of time and he went, Hey man, this is the part I need you to do. Right. This is the part I'm going to do. And right. he, and I just kind of went, give me, I'll do the whole thing. And I looked <laughs> and I just took it and uh, we were able to do this, this, uh, this whole thing. And I, I have to tell you about this activity that, uh, that uh, Jesse and I came up with. It was so cool. Right. And I, and for those of you that are watching, listening, you can try, I'll try to paint the picture the best I can, but it's, it was so powerful. Right. So on retreat, something I like to do is I take, uh, I have the young people write down, um, a sin on a piece of paper that they're struggling with something that they want to offer to the Lord. And I, on my retreat, I have them nail that sin to the cross or push it onto the cross. And then we burn it at the end of the, uh, at the next day, you know, after they, they, we go through a passion kind of a activity where they, they realize the Lord's passion and, and they get a chance to, to reflect on that sin. So I'm thinking same plan for this other retreat get the sin, do the bonfire, right? Every the Catholics love candles and incense. The smoke goes up to the Lord. Pfft. The day we're doing the retreat was uh, back in, in March when it was raining just constantly. Yeah, it's for Southern California, 2023, 
They were like, this year's going to be a La Nina, no rain again, we're in our drought. It rained the most I've the ever mo- seen. The, we had to take emergency service roads to get to the retreat center yeah. because the driveways were flooded. Side note, what a beautiful thing. So many people were complaining about how much it was raining. They're like, ah, rah, 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 rah. But that, that's looking at the storm. But I was looking ahead, looking at Jesus through all that, right? And yeah. now we're looking around and how beautiful, beautiful our Southern California landscape is. Beautiful. Right? So it's that it's you yeah. have to embrace the storms. Yeah, yep. So 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 it's pouring rain. So the the fire pit we we're gonna use is just a jacuzzi <laughs> at this nice. point. So so we're like, okay, I don't know what to do. And uh, and I'm like, okay, uh, you know. And, and so I had every all the kids write down their sin, and you know they all like fold it up or they crumple it like the smallest piece of paper they could possibly have because they're like, no, I told them nobody was gonna read it, and I had them all put it into a box like a secret box and then I closed it and then I'm like, okay, I'm going to figure out what to do with this. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, I could put it in, do I put them in water and then they'll just become unreadable. (laughs) And, uh, and, and Jess just goes, that's the worst idea of all time. And we did it. We like tested it and like wrote down a sin and put it, it just, it (laughs) still says the sin very clearly on the paper. And we're like, ah, and now it's like a magnifying glass in the water. Yeah. (laughs) They're like, great, there's my sin, and now it's wet. Uh, so uh, so she goes, what if we took blank papers and crumbled them up to look exactly like the ones they did? And I went, okay. So she's like looking at this pile of the kids' papers all crumbled up. We didn't read them, and, and, and her and I are, are creating replica. We take the ones that they read on, and we threw them all away, and we didn't read them. We got rid of them, and we put all the blank ones back in the box. And I walk out for this closing activity and I dump all the paper all over the floor. And I went, you know what, guys? We need to be accountable. And I pointed at one of the kids. I was, come up here and grab one of these papers and read it aloud. <laughs> and the shock on these young people's faces when I said read it aloud. They're like, no, no, they're no, no, like, no. <laughs> you promised. <laughs> and so they come up and they open it and it's blank. And I, w- and I was like, what? And then I'm like, you come up here, grab another one. That that, that must have been a dud. And they, like and they maybe slow. did you did you guys even do this activity? Yeah, did, did yeah. You were you not paying down? attention? Whatever. And so then every kid grabs a paper, and it's all blank. And and the the it ended with that that it doesn't matter what you wrote. And because God makes you new, and even though sometimes when we sin and and we still feel crumpled like these papers and crumpled and broken, our soul is healed. What's inside is clean. And then we can we can spend time then healing the rest of us, because that's what like the beauty of the sacrament of confession is. Is sometimes like when we go through a hard time with the you know our physical, you know what we what people see on the outside. You know sometimes the emotions that we portray or like it's not you know when we struggle or we do something bad, and we go to confession, you walk out and sometimes you feel like amazing, but sometimes you're like I'm still like feeling awful for this, right? And I still have to maybe go apologize to people and that's going to be difficult. There still might be tears to be shed. And that's okay. But the soul, what's inside, that's what God, that's what God's grace has cleaned so that we can then have that going forward to to then fix the rest of us. Dude, what a what a cool lesson, what a cool pivot. Yeah, it was crazy. Meanwhile, the janitor's sitting in the back going, who's Johnny? And why is he just, gossiping about his friend at school? <laughs> just opening this bag of sin from these kids. Like, oh, how weird. Um, so, but yeah, but it That's was dope though. Good but for like you. being able to do that, like it was, it, and, and like I could see the, my favorite part of retreats is seeing the young people get it. Yeah. Seeing like, like how many times do they hear that God loves them and forgives them and wants to them to pursue him and how he has an amazing plan for their life and for them to for it to click and the lights to come on and them to go oh man like i've heard that a million times but i think he's right yeah like i love that on retreat and let me affirm you in just the the way you were able to execute that particular that particular um, activity at the retreat says so much about your understanding knowledge competence as a youth minister as a youth leader as a fill in the blank any anything that that you do in that regard you just know it so well that you can pivot you can adapt to whatever situation throws at you let's compare it to something that i know very well music Uh, but there's you can be a musician where you can read the notes on a page 
and you could play them back, it's kind of like an athletic ability where you don't really understand what's happening, but like you could be really great at it. Sure. And you could do, and you could play that one song, but somebody goes, play me another song, and you're like, mm, I can play you the song I just played you because right. I practiced that one a whole bunch. Right. But once you start understanding music theory on a deeper level, you start understanding the interrelationships of these chord progressions, these key signatures, et cetera, et cetera. You can go down the rabbit hole. It, it just becomes another language that you speak, and, and you you understand it to your deep down to your soul so that I can play the same song on piano or guitar or if somebody wants me to do something different or play a different key I can be like no problem I got it uh, when I was at the Holy Land I brought my guitar and I played at mass every single day we were at uh, these churches the, the church in the nativity the holy sepulcher etc cetera, etc cetera. we would do the mass that symbolize that particular holy Wherever site. Wherever you were, sure, But yeah. sometimes they would be like, oh, uh, Ryan, and I'd plan these songs to play. They'd be like, oh, Ryan, um, they actually want us to do these readings. Do you have songs that fit that? I'm like, not a problem. And I would just pivot and, and really quick play those. But anyways, the, the deeper idea there is to know your craft so deeply that that you're not just executing from a top level, but you're doing it from the core, from the roots, and you could – those go, those sprawl out so vastly yes. that you can do it in any any way you need to to execute the job to the highest level. Well, and sometimes that, like, if you know something so well and you're so passionate about something, and, and it almost becomes that you're saying like that second nature. Your focus isn't on the performance or what you're doing, but you're allowing to then pivot and see the fruits of of that of that passion. The passion is still. It, the talent is there and the skill is there that you can use, but you can then see the passion of it. You know, it's not like, you know, cause sometimes you like do something and you're like, okay, I put all my effort into executing that. Yeah. You don't get to see that. Like while I'm executing this amazing things, I'm seeing the fruits of that as well. Um, so before we wrap, I guess we should address the, what, what's next? The elephant in the room. What's next for the two There's, Catholic dudes? What is next? I don't know. Comment in. You guys want to see this more? I'm, I'm enjoying this. We, it's, been two and a half years since we sat down at the table. This is a new table, but um, it's kind of nice. We got our mug still, though. Oh yeah, yeah. The, we got the mug there. You have one too, right? I got one. Danny had these made uh, back in our in, in the prime, right? In the prime of the, <laughs> the, the series, the good old days. Yeah, and so it's still. I don't drink out of it because um, I don't either. Mine's like I, sits on my desk. It's, it's a, show, like a novelty, it's a yeah. showcase piece, yeah. right? In mem in memoriam. <laughs> <laughs> um, but to be honest with you guys, what I think this is is like. Whenever, whenever we have the time and, and, and like the, the podcast is not going away forever and it never really went away forever. It was a, it, we all took a, we took a sabbatical. You know, what's funny was the, the last episode that we posted was about dying. <laughs> It was like how to die as a Catholic. Um, Foreshadowing. And it was in November, and we did that because it was like the end of the liturgical year. And Dio de los Muertos. Yeah, it's yeah. like the the month of the dead, right? Yeah, and yeah. so we were like, let's talk about it. And then that ended up being the last episode that we ever did. <laughs> it was like the cover was in black and white and stuff. It was, it was pretty grim. Morbid, morbid. <laughs> morbid, um, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, we... We definitely want to continue to share faith and continue to connect and continue to do this. And, and so when, whenever we have, you know, time or inspiration, like you can expect to hear from us again. And, and I'm sure that you'll, you'll be seeing more, more of us, uh, uh, of podcasts and, and all kinds of stuff. But, um, I, I, I realized like I, I loved having a platform just to speak. And yeah. I, I think I've filled that void in places that are not appropriate, <laughs> like at choir practice, I talk more than we sing the yeah, songs down yeah, yeah. and I just pontificate and pontificate. And they're like, uh, Ryan, can we get back yeah, to the let's, singing? Let's wrap up to we're, we're here for choir. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. And, and you know, like I've, I've had it with my youth group, but I, I miss the candid conversations where I'm just, yeah. I'm just talking. Yeah. And, and so we will definitely want to do more stuff like this and, and get back in action. Um, I've been getting bullied to do Tuesday thoughts again as well. I, I do do them with a friend of mine now on his podcast. Every Tuesday I do a, a five minute video. We pick a word of the week and we just talk about it. Yeah. And he wanted to add a faith element to his, uh, you know, his platform. So we, I, I, we, I do the, I'm like the day that they do, they do faith. Yeah. So you can, uh, you know, I've been doing stuff there, but I miss my own. And you know what the, 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 uh, the best thing for me was doing this really helped me grow personally in my faith as well. Um, knowing that we were filming every week and I needed to stay on top of relevant topics yeah. and everything. But the more you the more you invest in learning and growing and stuff, you can't not help but to grow holier and grow closer to God. And I think 
during our two year, two and a half year stint of two Catholic dudes was like the closest I've ever been in my faith. And, and I really missed um, a lot of the aspects of the show doing that. Couldn't agree more. So this is not the end. It's uh, a different kind of, of beginning, but we thank uh, thank you for listening. Amen. We missed you. We uh, missed you a lot. And uh, we hope you missed us, and, and we'll see you soon. Sounds good. Till next time. Whenever that <laughs> is. <laughs>